Uh, I think we should probably start with Rampage. Uh, really good main event. Excellent main event. Adam Page uh, beats Adam Cole. Um, what did you think? So we didn't know that there were going to be four matches. Uh, they announced three, and then they added a fourth. And in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, these matches better be quick. because well, was, this, that was, that was the, the, that was the butcher squash. That right. Just, that just... They just did it so Butcher would have a win going into the Wardlow right. match. So right. I understood why they no, did that, it. No, that, it made complete sense. Yeah. But um, because of what they did on Wednesday, where they went a little bit over the time, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, oh, maybe they're going to go a little bit over the time again because it's a world title match, and they're starting the match like, I don't know, it was like 28 minutes or whatever before. They, they did a 20-plus minute match. Yeah. But uh, it was really good. Um, the Texas Death Match stipulation was uh, Cole was bleeding, right? Cole was bleeding, and and um, Paige was bleeding from the chin a lot. That, but that seemed accidental. That I don't think that was part of it. I don't think he was supposed to bleed, was he? I don't know. I don't know. But um, I think it might have been when he did the moonsault into the super kick. Yeah, perfect, perfectly timed. Yeah, there was really a lot good. of really good, well, well timed stuff on that match. Actually, I thought them. I thought they had a great match, and I thought it was a, a great finish. It was very similar to the um, Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa finish, actually. You know where you know you go through all these things and keep getting up, and then finally it's like instead of like a, you know, it's a dead eye. You dead know, eye through a table off the apron. It's sort of it. like a because of the way you have to jump for that move. It's like a no look pass in the NBA. Like he can't really see. Like he kind of can turn his shoulder a little yeah. bit. But he's falling without, uh, without really seeing where he where he's hitting. So, uh, but uh, as far as I know, they, they were fine. But uh, it was really good finish. It's kind of scary. Uh, I kind of gasped a little bit when I saw it. But yeah, really good match. Uh, we also saw uh, Moxley and Wida Euler. Who are you doing? <laughs> I, I I do that every single time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and Brian Danielson. I didn't do the Daniel Bryan uh, against uh, the yeah. Gun Club, and I, I this was a, a fine opener to me. I think the my only small qualm with it was because uh, the the ass boys they they're sort of goofy in in their selling. I was like, mm, I don't know if this is the match to be the goofy selling in because of who they're facing. But otherwise, I thought it was a pretty fun opener. It was it was you know what it should have been. You know they. They they had the gun club, you know, their 24 and 0 was trio, so it kind of made it like, you know, the wins and losses mattered, so they they ended a team's unbeaten streak. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I really think, you know, um that they should be doing um I don't know that they're, I don't think that they're going in this direction. I've heard no hints, but you know, coming off of the Moxley Will Ospreay match, I really think they should try to do like a United Empire and Blackpool combat club feud i think that would just be awesome you know for going back in, in both companies which also has to do with something that we'll talk about later mm -hmm. and the fact that japan's starting to open up and um i just think there's potential for like a like a lot of really great stuff you know as we saw like just the other night with um samoa joe and minoru suzuki you know it's like one of those things where you kind of just throw that out there and it was it was just a great match until the finish you know i mean you know but yeah and then uh you to pinned uh billy gunn yeah so he got the the win over the, the biggest guy in the whole match yeah, he escaped uh famous sir um when billy gunn went to do it and then he uh he pinned him you know and uh yeah i mean that was a good finish i mean it's a the, you know it, it it's something where i don't think people expected billy to be the one that got pinned i don't think they expected wheeler you to the one who did the pin so that was good um it kind of establishes wheeler you to after those losses that he's had um I mean, they have really done a number for, for Wheeler Yuta. I got to give them credit on that because uh, I don't think a lot of promoters would have gone in that direction so strong with Wheeler Yuta. So, yeah. Do you know, and I don't know if you've talked to Tony about this, but uh, he's got a lot of young guys. And what was the thing about him that where he thought, okay, this is a guy I can put with, with a, a main event team because on the flip the other side you have daniel garcia and he's with jericho's team yeah but there are a lot of young guys in their company like do you know what that one thing that he saw in him i just think he think he saw he's a good wrestler um and 
you know, maybe uh, maybe it was the Danielson promo, you know, where he brought up Daniel Garcia and Wheeler Yuta, you know, and it's kind of like Daniel Garcia is getting a push. Um, you know, he's, he's the one thing you got to say for him is, is like, he's always building for the future. And I think sometimes when people look at the ratings and everything, and, you know, the ratings are all important without a doubt, but sometimes you, you have to sacrifice uh, parts of the show when it comes to ratings to get new talent over. Mm -hmm. He did that. I mean, he did that with Darby Allen. He did that with Jungle Boy, you know, before they were popular and and they were not ratings draws or anything like that. And in time, you know, you when people start accepting you as a main eventer, then, you know, you become a main eventer. But, you know, sometimes you've got to make the call of making somebody put somebody in main events and sacrifice a main event or two to get them. Sammy Guevara is another one. Mm -hmm. You know, it was you know, a nobody for the first, you know, not a draw or anything like that. And now he's a star. Uh, the Butcher beat, I don't even know who he beat. They never said his name <laughs> on TV. I don't, I have to find out who that is. Yeah. Uh, 49 seconds, one with a powerbomb. Yeah. Which, yeah, to, for the Wardlow deal. Yeah. You know, so they'll be battling over powerbombs, I guess, in that match. And then Dustin challenged CM Punk. And that's, that's going to happen on Dynamite? Yeah, it's match on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. So that between that and um, Jungle Boy and Kyle O'Reilly, um, you know, I think there's another one that's it's it's kind of turned into a pretty decent show. And of course, the big announcement, whatever that will turn out to yeah, be. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Ruby Soho defeated Robin Renegade. Twin Magic backfired here. It did yeah. not work. Yeah. Um, well. You know, they should, they, yeah, the Renegades tried it and then, um, Renegade Sisters tried it and then it, uh, the actual, it was Robin who got pinned. Yes. Yes. It wasn't Charlotte. Charlotte came in, did a couple things. And rolled out. Rolled out and then Robin came in and then Robin got beat with a riot kick or whatever they're calling that move now. Yeah. What was the move? It looked like a, um, Just it a looked kick. like a Sister Abigail that she actually won with. Well, she did a kick and yeah, 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 yeah. She, she did do another move it right afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever that move is. Yeah. Um, and and then the main event now later today, battle the belts. To me, this was the much more important show. Like, I well, the be much better main event. Battle the belts is the uh, battle the belts had three championship matches. For yeah, it's worth. Yeah. What do you think about them doing the Gresham match on that show because? As far as I can remember, outside of the ROH show, he hasn't been on any of their TV. Gresham? Yeah. Um, no. Um, Dalton Castle either. So it's almost like a... I know it's for the hardcore, you know, hardcore, the hardcore who Well, it's really... also, also trying to build up the Ring of Honor thing. You know, I mean, he owns Ring of Honor. You got you to gotta build it up. Um, can, can we show the guy on TV for a week or two before we put him in the match? I mean, oh, oh, you mean like build him up? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah. Could they have done some promos and stuff to build up the match, put them on TV? I know it's kind of cold out. Of it, may, it makes it seem like it was sort of decided last minute, which maybe it and, was. And maybe it was. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you, you could. You could. You could do that, sure. They didn't, but you could. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.